Hey guys, how are you doing today? I'm doing okay. Um, I've been up for kind of a while, but my sleep schedule's kind of a running joke anyway. Also, I've had a pimple for the past week on the inside of my nostril, and I got to the point where I'm like, if it doesn't go away, I'm going to name it. Its name is Jared, and it hurts. Like, it makes the entire side of my face hurt, and I had to take out my septum because it was hurting so bad. That's my day. I'm also wearing makeups because I wanted to. No fake eyelashes, though, because I'm allergic to the glue. Alright, well, anyway, now that we got that out of the way, this is another top five, and it is another villain related top five. It is my top five video game villains. Now, a warning in advance, um, I had a real hard time with this list because most of the people that I chose, um, I don't really consider villains, I consider like anti-heroes or people that ended up being misunderstood, that kind of thing. So, with that out of the way, we will move on. All right, number five is Illidan Stormrage from Warcraft, or World of Warcraft, whichever you know I'm from. I'm actually wearing an Illidan shirt in honor of that. This is for the trading card game. I'm going to try to turn around and show you the back, which actually has him on it. Can you see it? I hope you can see it. I love it. It's awesome. Um, Illidan's definitely a villain in the first expansion, but I guess in a certain ways I really, like, understand what he's going through. I don't agree with everything that he did, but I only partially consider him a villain, so. Mm. I guess he's considered a villain. Maybe. Brownie face. All right, next villain is, again, it depends on your perspective, because this person was partially a villain in StarCraft, then in StarCraft II, you know, you, Kerrigan, um, Sarah Kerrigan. Um, in certain ways, the Zerg were considered villains. In certain ways, obviously, she got to be the hero or just a misunderstood person, but... Regardless, she's still on my list as a villain, even though she obviously doesn't turn out to be a villain, but not only is she intelligent and powerful, you get to learn a lot about her and the Zerg. You get to see her real struggles to, you know, protect those one that she cares about, but also the understanding of what her real purpose is. And that's probably why I loved Heart of the Swarm, because you really got to learn about what the purpose for the Zerg was and what she could really be and I pretty much agree with every decision she had to make. Like a couple people said were saying, Oh, you're not gonna agree with these things. No, actually pretty much one hundred percent agreed with everything that she did because while it was hard, it was necessary. Meh meh. Okay. Number three is who's my number? I do this every single top five. Who did I have listed? Oh my gosh. I knew who I had listed. I feel silly now. Ultimicia, or Ultimacia, as I used to call her, from Final Fantasy VIII. Um, I don't particularly like her as a character. I mean, she's okay. But she was much more um, interesting in Dissidia. Um, the reason she's on my list is because Final Fantasy VIII was the first RPG I ever played, and the Ultimicia battles were among some of the hardest fights, even to this day, that I have ever fought. Like, they were hard. Like, if you didn't know what you were doing, they were next to impossible. Like, Ultimicia herself wasn't, wasn't hard. She was pussy. Griever. Meh. But once they started combining and there was, like, all these weird versions, my gosh, that fight was tough. That was just... 
And you think about it, she is the ultimate selfishness. She wants time compression. Time compression is going to make it so that only she can really exist. Like, time is going to be all squished together, and from what I've seen in that universe, nobody can coexist that way except for her. She wants to rule everything, which is, in a sense, absolutely nothing. Real weird, but... There's also this theory, by the way, that Renoa is Altamesia. Um, Square has been denying it up and down, but, like, if you haven't heard of that, go look up Renoa is Altamesia theory and just read about it. Like, I'll link it. I'll link it for you guys because it is so freaking interesting. Like, I'm a believer now. Like, I wasn't before, but I am a believer. Like, that is so interesting. There's also a Squall is Dead theory, which is also very interesting, but I'm a little less apt to believe that one. Alright, anyways, number two, Kuja from Final Fantasy IX. Now, most people don't like him. They thought he was a pussy. I mean, you look the way he dresses. It's kind of weird, but honestly, I had a crush on him for, like, the longest time. Like, I adored him. Is he selfish? Yeah. Is he whiny? Yeah. Honestly, like, until Dissidia, there's not a whole lot to redeem him at all. I mean, if you really, like, read between the lines and researched like I did, yeah, you'd probably understand him and like him, but... Like, not a lot of people liked him, but I adored him. Like, I don't know that he's a good villain, per se, but he's just a very interesting character. Like, he... He's my favorite character in Final Fantasy IX, and that's hard for me, because I like pretty much all the characters, but he is awesome. He is the reason I bought Dissidia, actually, because I really wanted to learn to play him, so, like, I mastered the Dane, got all that out of the way, and then, like, I started... I was able to unlock Kuja and play with him, and I sucked. I sucked, and it hurt. It hurt because I love him, but true story. Anyways, number one on the list is because of nostalgia. It's um, Doctor Eggman slash Doctor Robotnik. They're not the same person. Well, I guess in certain series they are, but Doctor Robotnik. Um, because he was my childhood. He was practically my babysitter. I played the Sonic game, Sonic 2 being my favorite, Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bee Machine being my second favorite, and, uh, I don't know, I just, I don't think he was particularly intelligent. I don't think he made a lot of the right choices. His stuff blew up in his face, but he was just one of those lovable villains for me because my childhood, nostalgia. Nostalgia will make you like a lot of things that you would otherwise be like, that's freaking weird. Yeah. So that's why Dr. R is on the top of my list. Are there better villains? Sure. Are there cooler villains? Sure. But nothing beats out nostalgia for me, so. There you go. Those are my top five favorite video game villains, and Next week, we will move on away from the villain stuff and move on to something totally different. But, just wanted to, you know, celebrate the loot crate this month. Alright, well, I'm pretty much done here. Um, I hope you guys have a great day, and I will talk to you soon. And that's it for this week. Okay. Bye-bye, guys.